<laughs> Questions? Just raise your hand. We'll start with Austin and Noah. Come on, Austin. Give it to me. What you got? Coach, what have, what have you found in Jeremiah T. Lander this spring, um, and how much have you seen him grow? Having T. Lander around has been great. Uh, seeing him literally grow and take steps each day, and, and that's something that we really try to do as a group. The biggest thing that he brings is he brings leadership, toughness, and the ability to really understand the system, that the things that we really liked about him as far as the 11 practices, is he's been very, very, very calm and calming everyone down when the storm comes. And he knows he can put it on him to be the person who wants to be the accountable and be the guy who's going to go out there and make the play. So we've definitely been pleased with him thus far in the spring. Coach, how do you feel? What have you learned, I guess, the most about this group since – you know, took over. I know you got, I got a chance to meet him early on and spoke to you, but what have you learned the most about them in the last three weeks? Oh, that they're a very resilient group, and they love football. They love all the small, minute things that go into preparation. And when you see those guys coming in, knocking on my door, or, you know, coming into my office at 6 a.m., wanting to know what we're doing on this particular day or this given day, that's exactly what you want. They understand that in order for you to be successful, you have to have a growth mindset. So we've seen that they've been able to live live by that and have that. And they know they want to be the best players on the team. And, and as I tell them, where much is given, much is required. So that's what we have to be able to adhere to as linebackers. You said in a recent video that you have this philosophy of players teaching players, teammates teaching teammates, especially in the in the room. Why do you have that, and just where does that philosophy sort of come from? That's something that has probably been in me ever since my playing days. That's something that Hayden Fry really instilled in the team. Something that they always said is that player-led teams will always be in positions to play for championships because if a player can lead a player, now you have what's called pure accountability. And you get indirect leadership from a player being able to do that. So if a player can lead, when those players become the leaders of the team, when we can sit back and make sure that the, the coaches run the program and the players run the team, you know your culture is where it needs to be when it comes to you being able to compete for championships. Between the Mike and Will, uh, how much do you want those to be interchangeable in terms of you know, your guys being able to play both? Yeah, that's something that's, that's very big for us to make sure that you are interchangeable. We tell our guys that you have to be what's called a dual linebacker. You've got to know both scenarios because what we want to be able to do is in any given scenario, get the best guys on the field. And, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're recruiting. We're making sure that both guys can have the opportunity or the ability to be able to do both jobs. Goes back here in the back. Your first spring finale here at UT uh, with the guys. And what are you looking to see from your, from your group on Saturday? Uh, just the, the, the element of consistent play. I, I think that's the one thing that you're always looking forward to on a day-to-day -day basis is making sure from a performance standpoint that that's consistent from us driving the defense, that that's consistent when we're at the point of attack, that we're making our plays as well. So that's kind of the biggest thing that we're looking to because, uh, again, we know that there's things that we have to do and things we have to accomplish, so we're just continuing to take steps as we grow each day in our spring, spring, the spring finale will be just another one of those moments for us to go out there and show it. Reese in the back, goes back here. Uh, how helpful is it to have an experienced guy like Drew Keeley in this group? That's awesome. When you have someone who has really been there and done that, that's exactly what you want in your room. Uh, he has an open mind for learning. And when you have someone who is a true veteran and understands football, like that, that's probably the best thing that we've learned about Keenan is he really understands football. So him being able to do that on a day, day in and day out basis and a play in and play out basis, that's something that really, really, really helps our defense. And we look forward to really pushing him to being one of the best linebackers in America. Ryan and Brent. Coach, I know he's not been out there uh, full on a full go basis yet, but what's been your impression of Arian Carter so far, and what's he been able to get out of this spring? As we've seen him out there going through a lot of drills and just helping how he can, what was he been able to get out? Of the yeah, he he hearing him is is the biggest thing when you hear him on the sidelines. You can tell he understands football and knows some of the schematic things that we want. When you see him move, when we look at some of our player speeds and player loads, he's always one of the top guys up there from a movement standpoint. So we know we're going to get someone that's coming back that's probably even faster than all the guys that are currently in the room. And that's, that's what really has me excited. He is the one guy in the morning that is coming in every morning trying to get a, get a, a head start at, on, on what's going on today. What are we going to do? What's all in the install? Oh, hey, coach, I want to learn about both positions. It, it, it is awesome 
having a chance to really talk with him. And he, and he is exactly what you want in your program. Coach, as, as you leave spring, what, what do you feel like your depth is, and what's the biggest steps this group needs to take over the course of the offseason before we go back to August? Yeah, probably. Um, I, I think as we come out of the spring, I, we, we feel very good about our depth. And now, and, and you know you're probably going to get some more guys coming back, you know, that didn't have a chance to participate during the spring. So from a depth standpoint, you know, we, we feel pretty good. Now, when it comes to what you have to be able to do, the beauty of, of what we're doing now, and we tell the guys, you have no idea how much more learning you're going to experience from the end of the spring to the beginning of, of your game week. Because everything that we've done, they're going to go through it again two more times whether we go through our installs from a, from a scheme standpoint or whether they go at and actually get to rep it just from a repetition standpoint. So they're going to be able to do everything a couple more times. So when you when they do that, now that will enhance their confidence. That will make their preparation level be a little higher. So that, that should be able to have, you know, it's some indirect improvements in their performances. Wes and Patrick. You know, a lot of times when people talk about Team Pila, they talk about sort of his, you know, his, his personality, his maturity, things, his experience. How would you describe him as a player? What he's physically capable of doing? Yeah, when you see him move around, uh, he definitely gets your attention because he is one of those linebackers that you love because he can run fast and hit hard. He is very explosive. He can get off the ground. Uh, he can bend his pads. He can get low. Uh, so, so he does everything that you want a linebacker to do. And you combine that with him kind of being Uncle Grandpa is awesome. Yeah, I, I think that, that process has been <coughs> one thing that we, we always have to be about on our end as coaches, as mentors, as teachers, and as leaders. We have to be about relationships. So on our end, we, every day we start off something that you want to improve on, something that you're doing for your family or something you're doing to help someone else just to see how other-centered everyone can be. And then we, all, we always kind of have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we're just learning about each other. Hey, tell me a little bit about your family. Tell me a little bit about you, and I'll tell them about myself. And that's kind of how our bond has really gotten really strong over the last four weeks. Has it gone better than maybe you thought it would? Maybe? Yeah, you know, I guess I would like to say that would be one of my strengths uh, to, when it comes to being able to build relationships with guys. And, and I think that the reputation from where I'm coming from, I think when they push play and saw some of the film, because those guys, they go back and they look at all of the film on YouTube and everything, and they saw how the linebackers played and some things where we, they would see some interactions. So they could see that as well. So when they saw that, and now they're actually getting that on a day-to-day -day basis, it just it increases their their level of, of buy-in, and and as as well as mine, because I see them wanting to get better, and that's what motivates me as a coach. When you see a player that wants to be as good as he can be, and he is going to do everything he can to try to make sure that he is going to be the guy. Eric, you were asked about uh, Aaron Carr a moment ago. What about Elijah Herring? I know he's not been able to go full mm -hmm. contact. What has he gotten out of spring, and what's the next step for him? I would, I would say the same thing that we talked about with Arian. Um, with, with Elijah, seeing his growth just from understanding football. Uh, the, the one thing we try to be is just we want to make sure we're great teachers. So when they're in the meeting, there are some times we let them run the meeting. Because, again, we talk about the player-led scenario. So when a player could run the meeting in front of their peers, oh, yes, I'm going to make sure that I help them. But it's going to give them confidence. But also, it gives me the ability to be able to meet with them kind of one on one. So when I could hear uh, Elijah come in and talk about some of the things from today's install or for today's install, I could be able to help lead him. But also, I see where he is and his learning. So seeing him really grasp a lot more things to help him be uh, a little higher from a football understanding standpoint, it, it is awesome, man. We can't wait to get him back because he is one of those guys that, that has a lot of sweat equity. By that, he's been on the field playing in the battlefield. And we can't wait to get him back for sure. Paige in Austin. Uh, back there, Paige. You mentioned that Keenan Peely is kind of like that uncle, granddad. How does that experience <laughs> help him embody the player led mentality that you have? No, it, it's awesome because when you're the leader, now you have to go out there and do it. Uh, the, the one thing we talk about in our room is leadership is best coupled with action. So when you see someone who is acting it out, everybody wants to follow, and, and, and it is perfect. 
And now we have to give him things to just work on on a, from a day-to-day -day basis, but he has really embodied with exactly what you want from a leadership standpoint. Maybe not on the field, Coach, but off the field. Who, who reminds you in your room of you as a player? Huh. You said off the field? Off the field. Off the field. Yeah, you know what? I would probably say Kayla Perry. You know, someone who has a, a, a spiritually motivated, uh, someone who is really, really, really about preparation and someone who is growing and taking steps in the program because that's what we all had to do. We all had to develop and go work. And that's what he's about. He's about working and doing exactly what he's supposed to do. So it motivates me to really make sure that he can be at his best on any given moment. Last one. Stillman got here right as spring ball started. <laughs> what, what, what have you seen from him? How, how much has he been able to learn in just four weeks? How, what do you think of his skill set? Yeah, the one thing about him, it, it, it's exactly what you want from a coaching mentality because – I'd rather say Wold and Sikkim. You, you, you do not have to say Sikkim to him because he is all about physical contact, being at the point of attack, and wanting to be, wanting to go hurt someone. That's exactly what you want as from a young player. Now, what we have to do is just continue to get him guided on understanding the jobs from a play-in and play-out scenario. As a young player, you know, when you come in kind of right as spring ball is starting, I mean, you talk about drinking from a fire hose. Like, I was trying to turn it down, but it, it was still going, going all over the place. He couldn't even see. But so, so we were trying to tell him exactly what to do. And then as you got from one day to the next day, you could just see him just continuing to take steps. So we feel he has a bright future. He, he is going to be someone everyone is going to know about here in, in five months. All right. Thank you, Coach.